Today we are making this Kawaii Habit Tracker using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. This is a beginner coding project that's about 300 lines of code. By the end of the video, you'll know how to add your own background image and fonts, center items on the screen, create a calendar with buttons that change color when clicked, add pop-up messages, and update and save information to storage so that everything works when we refresh the page. I'll be using VS Code to write my code so that I can easily run my code in the browser and see how it looks as we go along. To do that, make sure to search for and install this extension live server by Ritwick Day. If you have any questions throughout the tutorial, you can go ahead and type them in the comments and I will do my best to help. Create a new folder called Habit Tracker and then in VS Code, go to File, Open Folder, and open the new folder in VS Code. Then press the plus button to create a new file called habittracker.html. Now we can start coding. You can type HTML5 and press Enter to autofill the starting HTML template. If yours doesn't autofill you can just type out a simple version like this. Lines 1 and 2 let the internet know it's an HTML file written in English. Then we add an opening and closing HTML tag and add opening and closing tags for the head and body. In the head, we'll add a title called Habit Tracker which shows up on our tab. Let's also add an icon image so we can see easily when we have a lot of tabs open. Pick the image you want and drag your image into the folder. Make sure the picture is a PNG. Then type this line of code and replace the name of the image with your image name. For this link tag, rel or relationship to the HTML file is the tab icon, the type is an image, and it has a ref or reference to the image you want to use. The dot dot slash just means that the image that we're using is in the current folder. I chose this Sakura picture and this is what my folder looks like now. If you right click on the HTML file, you will see the option to open with a live server. This will open the file in the browser and you can see that the title and icon are working. We can also add our own font very easily. Go to cdnfonts.com and search for the font you want. Then just click copy and paste it anywhere in the head of your habit tracker file. So we've added our icon, title, and a font, but our page is still empty so let's code the body. The h1 tag has the biggest font by default so it's good to use for titles and h2 is good for subtitles. Let's add a title to show the month and a subtitle that says monthly habit tracker. Since we will be adding some design and functionality to it later, we need to give it a name or ID so we can communicate with it. All the IDs will be in quotes in the opening tag of each heading. To keep it simple, I'll use title and subtitle as the ID names. Later we'll write code to figure out the actual month using the computer's information. For the main project, we want to organize all the different elements into sections called divs or divisions. Using the div tag, we'll make a main calendar container first, then add a calendar div to it, then a calendar heading and a calendar content div within that second div. These will help us stay organized and add style to our web page. And then we'll add a reset button at the bottom using a button tag. And this is our template for the body. In the heading div, I'm going to add two paragraph or p tags. One will be the habit name and the other will be the number of completed days. In the content div, I'm going to add another section called tracker and add a ton of divs. To create our fake calendar, we want to have five rows of numbers and seven columns. If you want to add style to one specific element, you give it its own ID. If you want multiple items to have the same style, you give them a class name. Everything in that class will have the same color or font size or whatever style you want it to have. So I'm going to create a div with a class called days and add seven divs, each with a class called day, to that div. Then I'll duplicate it five times to create five rows of numbers and seven columns to represent a calendar.
This is how your code and web page should look so far. For the next part, we'll do a bit of styling with CSS using our IDs and classes. Let's create a style tag. First we can design the body. You can drag your image into the folder and then type body, add a pair of curly parentheses, and start adding attributes. Add a background image attribute on the left, and then put a colon, then type URL and add the file name in parentheses and add a semicolon at the end. We'll add a few more attributes in the same way, such as background size, background color, in case the image doesn't load, and blend mode of lighten, so that it has a cute faded focus effect. We can also make sure the elements are centered and add our font family from confonts that we added before in the head. To style items with IDs, you have to add a hashtag symbol before the ID name. For the month title, we'll add some space at the top using the margin attribute and align height with your preferred amount of pixels. By default, all words are at 100% opacity and black. For the subtitle, I'm going to make the opacity 0.7 or 70% and make the font size smaller. For our calendar container, we want to set the display to flex. This just means that we have control over the orientation of the sections within it, using certain special attributes such as justify content to align the content to the left, middle, or right. In code, that would be either start, center, or end. We will be aligning to the center. This is the style for the calendar div, that's going to be the square part when the numbers go, we will set the color to white and add a curve to each of the four corners using the border radius attribute, and set the margin to auto, so that it automatically centers itself. Since it's under the calendar container section which has a display attribute flex, we can also use set align content and justify content to center instead. If we go to our container div add justify content center, this will keep it centered no matter the size of the screen. Now for the calendar heading, let's add a display flex so we can do the cool split words thing. Usually two paragraphs would be on separate lines, one under the other, but if we add display flex, it will stay on the same line since there is space. Now, we want to separate them and create space between them. So we can justify space between, which is a feature you can only use with display flex. Let's also add the same border radius to the top left and right and none for the bottom and add a border, padding, font, and background color. For the calendar content area, let's add this padding and a border. Now let's add styling for the calendar days. For each row of days, we added the days class. We can add style by typing dot and then the name of the class. We'll give it a display of flex so they adjust and stay on the line and each individual day has the same width. For the day class, we want to give it a width of 30 pixels, margin of 3 pixels, padding of 10 pixels, and font of 15 pixels, and a border radius of 20 pixels to make it circular, and a background color of pink to see how it would look. Great, we've completed the styling portion of our code so let's take a break, get some water, use the bathroom, stretch and look away from screens for a while. In the next video, we will write the most important part of the code, the JavaScript.